Here we got day three of Bryant Coons 1969 Chevy pickup. First day we stripped it all down, we stripped all our doors out. Day two we did our left our right door, and today we're going to be doing our left door. So I'm going to give you a different angle at it this way. You'll be able to see what I'm working on uh, from a different perspective. First thing I like to do when I get a door is look inside and see what kind of dents I may or may not have. So as far as I can tell, this doesn't have any dents in this area. Again, when we're doing this, we want to keep as much of the original door as possible, um, but we want to make sure we take care of any problems that we have. So if we've got dents and dings and, and problems up in this larger area, we'll lose a larger piece. But this has just got a little bit of rust down here and uh, just a little bit of rust down here. So it looks like it'd just be a short patch panel like it was on the left door. Again, I'll be doing it at a diagonal cutout and we'll be starting with our large piece first. All right, so I want to maintain the same bottom down here because it lined up real well with the truck. So, measure up 12 inches and mark it. So you can see this piece is pretty wide, it's 21 inches tall. You can get it at 10 inches and 14 and 21, I believe. So this time I'm gonna go about uh, five inches here. I'm gonna go four inches here because my rust spot is larger on this side. I'll use some tape to uh, help guide the line. So now I get the bottom piece and I mark up exactly how far it's gonna go here. side right here I'm going to be grinding away just enough metal so that I can take this piece and slide it up. With our new patch panel up on top of this, if you were to take a tape measure and measure out 12 inches, you'd be down about an eighth of an inch because of the thickness of the uh, bottom down here so we can't scooch it all the way up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grind off enough of this bottom to where the new patch panel fits in and it's exactly 12 inches. So normally when you're grinding this you just grind it to where the two pieces um, split and that's generally far enough but you of course have to trot fit. Now, the reason we're going to all this trouble of getting this up to 12 inches and all that kind of stuff is um, not only to line up the door at the bottom but also so that we get a good proper weld here. Um, when we're taking these two pieces and we're buttoning them up together, we don't want to do an overlap like this because uh, that tends to harbor moisture and you get problems come back anyway. The additional gap uh, is more body work than Bondo than you're going to have to do. So uh, we get this right up here and we butt it right up against, but we don't want it straight flat right up against because when we weld, that weld has to go into something. So we want just a little bit of a gap in there and then our weld will penetrate into that gap right there and when we grind off the top, uh, our metal stuck to get, still stick together. Sometimes if metal's too, too close together, when you weld it, the weld doesn't permeate far enough down into the uh, metal and when you grind the top off, then your metal comes apart. So we're using thin cutting wheels here and the thickness of the cutting wheel is basically just the right thickness that you want for that weld to hold on to. So get a thing on here and uh, now what I'll do is mark where that cut's going to be so I can grind off the paint here. I'll be doing some tack welds to hold it in place and we're going to need to get the paint off. Welding it down keeps it from jiggling about when we're trying to cut. What you see me doing here is um, 
I'm kind of scribing down the line and then coming back and cutting through and scribing down and cutting through. This way, if I uh, make multiple passes on this here, it, uh, if I did cut this out a little bit crooked, then when I do the multiple passes, it generally uh, evens it out a little bit better. Before we take this piece off, actually I should have done this earlier, um, we're going to do a trace out line and make sure that we follow it all the way through repair. Now I can gently remove this piece right on top here. Just like on the other door, what we'll be doing for uh, cutting out our inside patch panel here um, is we're going to go a little bit further up than the outside patch panel will be. Uh, you don't want to do both patch panels and have them be in the same area because it's harder to line it up. So uh, the, the inside piece will slide a little bit further up and then it'll be easier to line up. And you want to mark a reference point here. Also, I'm going about eight inches up and marking it. Last time I went straight across this time I think just for kicks I'm going to do it at a bit of a diagonal and just see how much it helps or not. I'm going to be using tape to mark this too, obviously. I guess I'm just going to generally set this on here. Mark with a magic marker. And we want to do this just like we did our outside piece. We want to slide it up and have it nice and uh, tight, but we can't do that with all of this down here. So we'll um, cut some of this off, making sure we don't go too far up. You have braces right here, and there's a brace right here. So you have to be careful that when you're cutting this out, you don't cut in deep. In fact, when cutting all your metal, you kind of want to just have it in far enough to cut through and just kind of go right up on top. You don't want to get into here deep and do any damage. So sometimes these, uh, you can find the spot welds easy and you can get a spot weld cutter and cut it out. Or you can just slice and dice like I'm about to do. Just like last time, we'll do some tack welds to keep it from uh, moving around like this. Always double check all your measurements. Uh, it's a real drag when you can't shut your door because this piece is in the wrong place. So I'm going to be cutting this out. When I get in this area here again, I'm going to be looking out for the brace. I'll cut this all the way through right in here, but on the sides, I'm just going to use the uh, the cutting wheel to kind of scribe, to, to lightly cut into the area, and then after I get this out of the way, then I'll finish cutting this off here. Now this piece won't sit down as flat as you can get your outer piece to do it. Um, so you're going to have to go a little bit slower, and you want to make sure that when you're cutting, you're holding this nice and even. You're not going at a diagonal like that. Here in the corner, I'll use a Dremel tool so I can just uh, get right into the nooks and crannies without cutting any adjacent metal. So uh, now we'll go ahead and get our piece on here. The edges are a little bit extended, so we'll trim a little off, and then we'll be able to slide it right into the old door. Everything's looking good for our inside piece, so now what we will do is our outdoor piece. 
But before we do, we're going to uh, clean up the inside some and shoot around some dust and mold. Again, we'll be using our nifty little tool here. Okay, so just like yesterday, we start our tack bolts in the center and we work our way out. Again, reason being is that there's any warps in the door and we start on our edge and we work in, then we'll track that in there. But if we work our way out, then we can move it on out. Okay, I get a couple of tack welds on here and then I'm going to hammer right on top of those welds. When we heat metal, it shrinks. When we hammer metal, it expands. These are just nice light taps, by the way. Nice big long straight edge like this, and uh, it's easier to keep track of uh, how nice and smooth it is or not. Constantly look for uneven patterns and make sure that as soon as you find something that's a little bit off, you get it right back in line once you're welded. Okay, so now I'll use my large grinding wheel. Again, we're using this large one instead of the uh, the smaller ones like this because when I'm grinding with this it'll generally show up the high low spots a little bit easier. Also you don't want to do all this welding and then start grinding it down because it's uh, real tough to do it that way. So you weld a little bit, you grind a little bit, weld a little bit, grind a little bit. up on it pretty firm and uh, I'm doing it with the concave side here. If you do it with a flat side then uh, sometimes it flattens this out a little bit too much. This has got a little bit of a curvature to it so I need a little bit of a curvature. So I'm going to be pushing up and just let the hammer. So I'm going to go about every four inches when I'm doing this and uh, I'm going to make sure I don't get too much heat up and I'm just going to slowly uh, fill in all of the, the larger gaps and then go from the I'll keep doing this until I get them maybe, oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch apart or so, and then I'll just uh, fill those in. 